Good morning, everyone. Good morning to you, Lori. How are you? Hey, Lori. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing good, thank you. I am excited for today's show. I am completely excited for today's show, and I'm also going to be announcing the lineup for the last month. I've been kind of quiet on it, getting everybody to settle into certain dates, but today's the big announcement on the upcoming shows for, I think, like the next month. Oh, that's exciting for sure. Now everyone can plan. I know everyone's going to come to all of our shows, but at least they can plan and know what sort of content we'll be covering. <laughs> I know we're going to have to look up the date because I don't recall when we started, but I think we're going to be getting close to it, maybe November or something. We're going to have to make sure we recall that so we can say it's our anniversary date. Oh, that'd be awesome. We're like on show 43 or 44 now. It's amazing to me. I know when I look at the YouTube channel and I see all of the past shows, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. You know, I guess we're the real deal now, right? We're no longer a wannabe. Are we the real deal, Lauren? Oh, totally. <laughs> totally. Um, and I'm sure our viewers would say the same thing. <laughs> well, you know what? That's the that's the point we want to make. It's the audience, especially our frequent flyers that are here every week that make it possible. The new people joining us, we get a, a mixture. It's the audience that makes us the real deal. Not us. It's the audience. So with that, that is true. to you to get us started here, Lauren. All right, let's go. It looks like our, our numbers have kind of steadied a little bit. I know a ton more will be coming during the show. So uh, bear with me as I share my screen and we'll do a quick intro and then Lori will drop, dive into the content. There we go. So good morning again, everyone. My name is Lauren Simpson. I'm with the SBDC or the Small Business Development Center. We're a national program with over a thousand locations across the country, and we offer no cost services to local small businesses. Now we are able to offer our services because your tax dollars have already taken care of our fees. So be sure to get in contact with us for help. For the Los Angeles Network, we cover the Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, and Ventura counties. And you can see those represented on the map in front of you. You'll see there's Santa Clarita area, Camarillo area, Pasadena, down to Long Beach, and everywhere in between. So if you are in any of those counties, again, LA, Santa Barbara, or Ventura, we can help you. Now we offer no cost business advising. So when I talk about help, I'm talking about being able to sit one-on-one -on -one with one of our business experts or advisors as we call them. Uh, you might even be lucky enough to sit with Miss Lori Williams, our guru of all numbers. Um, we also have experts in marketing as well as uh, uh, finance and taxes again, our guru here, uh, business planning, uh, licensing and permitting, you name it, we've got it. Uh, and then you can also join virtual trainings. And so they're in-depth trainings, much like the one you have joined today. So again, we're here to help. Please contact us to get started today. If you would rather call us uh, via phone, of course, go to 866-588-7232. If you're more of an online person, go to smallbizla.org forward slash new client. Now, if you've reached us outside of the, uh, our network, again, Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, Ventura counties, please go to americasbdc.org forward slash find your SBDC. So Lori, I'm gonna stop my screen share really quickly and then do quick housekeeping. Let's please put all questions into the Q&A. Again, questions into the Q&A. The chat will be reserved for our good morning. So good morning to you, uh, Emma, of course, as well as Charles um, and everyone else of course, uh, but we'll be putting in some really useful links and tidbits that Lori would like to share with you. And if you, I'll also be including information related to the, our YouTube link Lori mentioned earlier. And so you can go to our YouTube page, see our playlist and find all of our shows. Um, and I'll put in some information Lori related to how everyone can get in contact with you if they'd like to set a meeting. With that, I will pass it over to you. Good morning again. Yep. In fact, I got a couple emails from Lauren this morning on some people that want one-on-ones to go over financial Excel documents, and I've reached out to you. So look at your um, inbox. 
And Lauren, also, can you put in the link for people to sign up to the show that they can send to a friend? Um, yes. Let's make it a bring, bring a friend month. So that way people can, because you don't have to sign up at the SBDC or be a client of the SBDC to watch the show. So I just want to let that know. Okay, so Lauren is going to right now put in a link to the upcoming webinars that I have, my financial literacy. I have added session number two, which is using an Excel document for financial modeling and forecasting. This was my first, this last month, my first month doing session number two, and it really has turned out to be a winner. It's a great foundation for session number three. I think I'll be offering these again in November, definitely not December, but take advantage of this. And once you click on the link, you will see a full description of exactly what it's about. Now, I want to tell you about our upcoming lineup. Like I said, we've got a full lineup coming up. So next week, we have Michelle Perkins. And Michelle Perkins was introduced to me by no one but our Deborah Darris. I said, Deborah, do you have other people that you think should be on the show? And Michelle has an expression on her Facebook page and her um, website, dream it, create it, live it. Your professional life should be one of the best parts of your life. Really interested in hearing from Michelle and what she has to say. Then I have to give some attention to dogs. Okay, I'm always talking about my cat and the kitty stroller. By the way, on a side note, before I say that, I just got the coolest new cat stroller. It has the same tires that's on a giant bicycle, the same rubber, and it's got little shock absorbers for when we go down the mountain bike trail. My cat is the coolest on the back trails. But anyway, back to the outside of the cat. John Kurtz, Dog is Good. Dog is Good has been around for a while. It's a unique gift for dog lovers. It's also a unique structured business model. So some real exciting information on October 12th. October 19th, Jennifer is going to come on and talk about narrative food. It's mindfully crafted small batch foods, and she's also going to tell a pivot story, what they are doing currently to pivot through COVID. A really fascinating story. Then October 26th, Abby Zizia Botanicals, one of our favorites. She's been on the show before. If you saw her last show, she mentioned at the very end of the show, it was just kind of this last bit of a statement where she had held up a brand new product that she was just getting ready to launch. I don't even think she had the finished um, product in her hand. It was just a prototype. And it's a um, type of herbalist formulated treats for your furry friends. It's also a sab that goes on the dog's paws. Well, as Abby said to me just this last week, she goes, I think I finally hit the product that is flying off the shelf that people are going to love. And she went about it with a new way. She did a new um, series of contact to stores, et cetera. And I told her, you got to come back on and tell the story because Abby's been at it for some time. And I think she might have hit the big one now. So she's going to come back and tell her, tell us the story of what she did. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then on November 9th, we got Jules Martinez Hertz. She has another, I should say, she is another referral from Deborah Darris. Fascinating. She says on her website, it's not about being perfect. It's knowing what to do in any situation. And she talks about business etiquette, and it's going to be a really interesting topic from there. So that is what's coming up in the next few months or in the next month and a half. Like I said, full lineup, really exciting. Now, today is a special show. Today, I first want to begin by telling you how it came about. I know who you're going to meet in a minute. Called me as a client, and she had a couple questions, which we're going to get into in a minute. And during the process of me answering her questions, I basically went and said, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. You've got a misunderstanding on that. And I have said, seen that many have this same misunderstanding, leaving it a little bit of um, nebulous until we get into the discussion. And so she's going to come on and talk about our session and what she learned because she's an incredible person and her her goal was to make sure her message got out to other people so they did not make the same mistake. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's first talk about her company. Become Odara is a Latina 
owned marketing boutique that offers digital solutions for female business owners from newsletter and social media strategy to blog, copywriting, and event planning. So let's just get on and on and let's start going through all the cool things we're going to be talking to about today. Welcome, Anna. Welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Lori, for having me. I'm very excited to have this conversation with all the people in this room. It's a full room. I know. It's awesome. And it seems like it was a long time ago that we started talking about you coming on the show, even though it probably has not been that long. It seems like it. So what, what I want to do is I just want to start with the company. So tell me a little bit about the services your company offers. Let's get a foundation before we go into the question. And then also, I'm going to have you tell the audience what's special about today that makes your message today be perfect timing. Let me say it that way. You bring that all together for us. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Well, when we set up this call, it was over a month ago, and it was just perfect that it coincides with the Latin Heritage Month. Uh, it's a celebration that I think it started in the United States, like since the 70s, 68, I believe. And it's pretty much to honor all the Americans who uh, moved to the United States coming from South America, from Latin America, from um, Central America, and also Spain, um, to really like honor like the, our stories, our heritage, the culture, and my entire purpose of coming here today and sharing my story is to have help other folks like me, and especially like other Latina women who might not have the connections that I didn't have until I found out about SPDC and to really learn how we can, um, you know, like endeavor in the United States, be an entrepreneur, but having also like the legal um, strategy, the structure and all the things that we're going to talk about. So I'm very excited to, to have this representation today, at, you know, like celebrating Latin uh, and Hispanic Heritage Month. Wonderful. So let's get a start now. When, let's talk about what brought you around to starting your company? What was your background? And then also, because this is where we're going to go down the pathway, what structure, what legal structure did you first start out? Bring us to that so we can start telling the story. Yes. Uh, well, I'm originally from Brazil and my background is in journalism. And since I moved to the United States, I moved to do my MBA, which it's kind of interesting because if you think about all the mistakes I made and you say, wait, she has an MBA? Yes, I have an MBA. I have two MBAs actually. And I can make mistakes that I think everybody is, you know, like it could, it could happen to anybody. So um, when I moved to the United States, I started working in marketing using all my copywriting. Oh, que bom, uma brasileira. Paula Fonseca tá aqui. Ah, que delícia. Hello. Uh, it's it's always like fun because I think oftentimes when we think about Latin and Hispanic heritage, we only think about Spanish speakers. So Brazilians, oh, usually we are like the cousin who is invited to the party, but you know, like we 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 get along and we all know like the 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 language, but there are the the, the differences as well. So very excited to see a Brazilian here today. Um, so yeah, so going back to my background here, when I moved to the United States, started working in marketing, using all my knowledge in journalism and the background I had in social media and building strategies online for digital companies. So I started working here mostly with tech companies and female owned businesses, uh, helping them with like newsletter strategy, event planning, copywriting, blogging, and all that. But that was not what become what that it was. And I think a lot of the entrepreneurs here in this uh, room would agree with me that sometimes you have a business idea and oftentimes you don't quite know what your business will be, but yeah. you kind of know that you want to create something for yourself. So Become a Data actually started as a medium blog. I was simply posting about my own self-development journey and some life hacks, some uh, of my experiments in life. And that pretty much go, went like live uh, viral. Like I had like 61,000 viewers on some of my, my blog posts uh, oh. talking about like a 30 days cold shower challenge that I did. And other people start connecting with me. And that gave me the chance to open a different platform. So I went to Instagram, created a series of posts with 
women, immigrant women, who also had their own self journey uh, story to share. And we start building on that. And then during the pandemic, I saw the need to create another channel, which was the YouTube, which is bilingual. So we have videos in English and in Portuguese, um, speaking about self-development. But along the side, I was still doing the consultancy and, you know, like doing like social media, digital strategy for companies. And that was what was financing my Become Modata endeavor. So um, in 2021 and the, the beginning of this year, I decided to make it more structured. So I was operating as a sole proprietor and that was fine until I went to Brazil and I had a conversation. Paula would know we have something called May in Brazil, which is pretty much like a license that you have that makes simple for you to open a business. And talking to my friends in Brazil, they were like, well, if you want a business to grow, you can't start with like a small structure. You already have to go big. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, so that said, I came back to the U.S. I was there on vacation, and I came back and started doing my research, just like everybody would. I went to Google, and I was looking like, can I open a business as an immigrant? Uh, I am documented, so that's one layer because I know that there are like several people with who do not have the same privilege, who might face difficult uh, situations in that in that sense. So I was like looking for all this research and you can find because they have really good SEO, the search engine optimization, you know, the way that those companies play the algorithm to tell you to incorporate as a, an LLC or to change the structure um, yeah. is yeah. really good. And we're going to touch on that. Elaborate on what you just said, because I, that was key. And, and I don't think a lot of people are catching what you're saying, because we're also kind of going to go down that road. But what you're saying, and it's so true, when you Google, and this is true of not only legal, but also financial business information, there are pages upon pages of paid ads from people that are wanting you to do whatever it is that they're selling, the service that they're selling. But this more than likely may not be in your best interest. In fact, I, who always go to the government websites, you know, you know, I always say that, go to the horse's mouth, go to the government website. I have to go sometimes two, three pages in to go to the government webpage because now it's gotten where there's a plethora of pages of people who are blogging, wanting to be hired as a consultant, and this isn't necessarily the information you want to be extracting. So I just wanted to stop and add on what you said, because that's so important. That's key, what you said, because if the, and that's the other thing that I think like a lot of people who have English as their second language might add an extra layer, layer here, because if you have to go to the government website, usually the language there will be very complex. Yeah. You will have like certain words that you might not understand. You have to be Googling and go, go into dictionary to understand what does that really mean. So when all those other people who are consultants and trying to sell their services, they would write in a way that will connect with you. And that's when we have to be extra di diligent. And that's why I'm so grateful for the SBDC as well. Because to me, it's very important to have a clear understanding if what they are talking generally on the internet is applicable to you. It was not until I went to one of your workshops that you were explaining the, the legal structure of business. And I had just incorporated as an LLC, which was, um, I was doing my taxes last year and the, the woman who does my taxes says, you know, you're paying 15% on, on, the, on taxes, maybe would be worth it for you to take a look and open an LLC and having the tax advantage, which I'm pretty sure that you heard many other yeah. people coming to the same, same thing. And I think it, it, it has that sense of like when you're an entrepreneur and you kind of feel lost, sometimes you just want to do it, yeah. make the mistake, and then learn. So I'm glad that I made those mistakes because now I'm in this position where, okay, now I know more than I knew before. But the entire purpose of the show and even like sharing this message to really help people prevent them from having um, the this, this same uh, mistakes. So when I uh, attended your workshop and you told me about, I, I always remember 
like you said, there is a few things that you have to think about before incorporating. And the main was like, would there be any legal advantage by incorporate legal or tax advantage by you incorporating? And I was like, what do you mean? So if you want to <laughs> talk yeah, in that. I do. So yeah, so we're going to back up. We're going to go forward and then we're going to back up. Yeah, let me tell you what I mean by that. So one of the things I want to come back and say that I'm really glad to have you on the show talking about the challenges when English isn't your first language. I mean, that's not something we discuss and a lot of in our audience and people who view it, it's a situation. And it's funny because I have traveled to Ecuador and South America, speak very little Spanish. And so I know that feeling inside when you're confused and you're trying to figure something out and you can't speak the language and somebody just says in English I can help you you're like okay I, I always was afraid I was going to end up in some hotel in a back road because I was so desperate just to have someone I could communicate with so I just want to say that I'm really glad that we're speaking about this aspect as well um, but with that what we're going to get into right now is what the mistake that you made that many, many are making. And as I've said repeatedly on my show, I am never about telling people what to do. I'm about giving them full transparency, information and clarity. So now I'm going to say the big thing. When Anna called me, I you had said you had changed to an LLC so you could have tax advantages over a sole prop. And immediately I, as she started communicating, I think our first communication was email actually, as she started communicating, I was like, whoa, 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 back up, back up. The part you said was not true. That, that's not true. Let's get that out right away. That's not true. And that's what launched our, well, I need to talk because I thought it was. And interestingly, since our conversation, not before, but since our conversation, I've had several people call me and say the exact same words. And that's when Anna was like, I want to come out and speak to people. And I got to make a something known to the audience. You had gone as far as to write an article so you could publish it so more people could hear this. I mean, Anna really became a spokesperson of getting out there and trying to communicate any of the misunderstanding she had so other people don't have that under misunderstanding now i am going to launch into what the true differences are but before i do anna do you want to add anything did i leave out anything about our conversation oh pretty much and honestly, it was three days was... you're breaking up just a little bit just a little bit suddenly there you go No, nope. so, yep, no, now I think we can. Okay, sorry about that. No, technology does that, no worries. Here it says that she can't hear. I come back. Let me know. Maybe I can change locations, but yeah. Yep. Hey, you're breaking up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is you might want to switch or take off headphones and go to computer. I'm going to go into what it is that the explanation is giving you a minute to get settled. So guys, there is no taxation difference between a sole prop and an LLC. An LLC, in fact, utilizes the exact same document, a Schedule C, when doing your tax returns. There's no differences in the type of business expenses that you can have. There is no difference in the amount of taxes that you pay. There literally is absolutely no difference. Now, where a tax difference does come into play is when you have a situation where you are an S Corp or taxed as an S Corp. You can be an LLC and you can be taxed as an S Corp or you can structure as an S Corp. That is the only area of the legal formation that the tax difference does make a difference. Um, now, it's, um, C Corps are included in this, but most of my audience is a S Corp or a sole prop or an LLC. So I tend to not speak of C Corps that much. Now, um, in that, what happens? And and Anna, let's test your voice. Are you? Let's let's say something. 
something. <laughs> okay, much better, much better. So I'm going to launch in a little bit more, but let's come back to you and have you add any aspect that you would like to add. And I've had that happen. The headphones work and then the headphones don't. And, you know, it's just, it's the most um, scariest feeling when you're on a live show and suddenly things don't work. I know it. I live it every day. I get it. So no worry. You're, we're hearing you now. So pick up where you left off. Yes, I will say that it was basically like 20 days after having incorporated. So I was super excited, you know, like pumped up, like, okay, let's do this. Now it's time to go out in the market and find more yeah. clients and all that. And then when you told me like, hey, I don't think it might have a, a tax advantage for you. Also, all you have actually accomplished with more legal structure so you have more like more responsibilities now with the government you have to pay like an 800 dollars annual franchise um mm -hmm. uh, uh, ta uh fee and yep. i was like but i am not even making money yet no. so i did not need it uh for sure like more you know like responsibilities financially especially with the business so that was key to me to learn that the, the business need to be somehow making some type of like money so you can consider doing the llc and then an s corp as you explained to me and i think that was like key for me to understand that i would be just fine as a sole proprietor because i would still have to pay the 15 percent, and there would be no way to avoid that but right. at least i wouldn't have like all the the extra layers of responsibility so that was like very important and then you also guided me for the process of uh dissolving in there in a minute so guys so what i'm going to do is i i like to tell the stories in a way that's more fun and easier to understand so we're going to tell a story about what an llc is prior to an llc even coming into existence there was just simply a sole prop and that's your default legal status if you are just you know i, I decide today i'm going to knit kitty sweaters i'm going to sell them at the flea market i buy some yarn i didn't register with any entity i just started doing business i am by default a sole prop now the other thing is, and especially I notice, like in California, everybody thinks everybody operates as an LLC because once again, that's the cool thing. That's when entrepreneurs becomes Hollywood. Everything becomes cool. But I want to tell you that when I was studying for my enrolled agent um, certification, so it's a little bit back in data, but it was like 82% of the companies within the United States operate as a sole prop. So that's not like this is not a common structure. So let's go back to our story. So you were either a sole prop or you were a corporation which can consist of an S or a C corp with many of the decisions about either being on the fact that you might have over 100 shareholders, et cetera, um, has to do with stock and equity. But you only had those two choices. So that was the standing. Now, when we talk about legal structures, we got to draw a line down the middle and we have to understand that on one side of the line, we're discussing legal and the other side we're discussing tax. So I'm gonna keep saying legal and then I'm gonna discuss tax. Okay, let's go back to the story. Now, I don't know how long ago this was, maybe like 20 years ago. I don't have the date, I didn't recall the date, but let's figure out the story here and it will help you understand. So there was only a sole prop or a corporation. Well, businesses, especially ones that owned real estate, they did not want to go through all the intense paperwork of setting up a corporation because you have to have bylaws. You have to make sure that every year you do annual minutes. You have much more of a paperwork process in setting up a corporation and managing a corporation. Not terribly impossible, but it is uh, involved. It's not like it's something you can set up really easy. So the business community especially people investing in real estate, they went and they knocked on IRS's door and they said, hey, IRS, we're going to have a chat with you. We have realized that it would be really super cool if we had a company structure that gave us the legal Remember, I'm talking legal, legal protection, meaning your personal assets won't be sued. The company is a separate entity. If the company was a corporation, it would be sitting here next to me. I'm separate from the corporation. It's sitting here next to me. So you would sue the company, right? So they said, we want that. 
That's what we want. We want that legal protection, but we don't want all that paperwork stuff you have to do, right? So they, they told IRS, well, this would be really cool in IRS in IRS fashion, as I like to tell the story, listened to them and said, no, no, that doesn't work for me. You know, the IRS isn't too flexible. That doesn't work for me, right? So business entrepreneurs, they're aggressive. When they want what they want, they want what they want. So the IRS said, I'll tell you what, you want this little hybrid thing? Do it under state statute. Now, state statute is a legal term that just means it's created and regulated and allowed to in existence by the laws within the state, state statute. So they said, okay, we'll get a hybrid model and we'll have it by state statute. So the LLC was born, but it is legally recognized by state statute. So let's communicate what that means. Let's pretend we have three people in a room. We have somebody who is a sole prop sitting here in one chair. We have somebody who is an LLC sitting here in another chair. And we have someone who is an S Corp sitting in a third chair. So the state of California walks in and says, good morning, and addresses the sole prop. Good morning, sole prop. And then says, good morning, LLC. Good morning, S Corp, because the state recognizes the three structures. Now, here's where it gets interesting, guys. IRS walks in in the morning and says, good morning, and looks at the sole prop and says, self-employed person, because the IRS has to have fancy language, right? So then the IRS goes up to the LLC. You ready for this? Good morning, self-employed person. Goes up to the S Corp and says, Good morning, owner employee. So the LLC and the sole prop are both self-employed person as related to the taxation, the IRS taxation. So even though they have different entities, all it's doing is changing the legal requirements of the paperwork process. It is not changing anything else from a taxation standpoint. The IRS never bent its rules. It just said, I'm going to put this in a final and I'm going to call you the same. The only time you start to get a tax advantage or difference is if you are a sole uh, S Corp, and S Corp is what I meant to say, and that is because you are now recognized as an owner employee and you have the ability to take a portion of the profits and it not be subject to, okay, everybody listen, pay, roll, taxes. I didn't say not subject to taxes. I said payroll taxes. So what happens is when you're an LLC or a sole prop, you have to pay the owner employee a portion of Social Security and Medicare, but you get that back as a credit on your taxes. So technically, you're only paying about the 7.65%. And it's no different. When you are a S Corp, you can take half of the profits as distributions and they are not subject to the payroll taxes. So half of the profits are not subject to that 7.65%. But you have to then, you got employees, so you have to pay in your workman's comp, or not workman's comp, I didn't mean to say that. You have to pay in your unemployment insurance. So you have an additional tax on the unemployment. You have an additional tax on the SDI, state disability insurance. You also have to file a separate tax return and you have to take the owner employee as a W-2. And if you don't have employees, that means you have to hire someone to do a payroll and write a W-2 check. And you have to go through the expense of having your own tax return done on the corporation. Think a bunch more papers that you got to pay a CPA and to figure out what that 50% so you at least take a reasonable salary is what it's called. You have to usually see a CPA or an EA like I am in advance to figure out that number. Now, I went through this a lot uh, a lot of information really quickly. So this isn't a webinar of teaching and I know that there may be questions. You just reach out, we'll go over this in specific. But I just wanted to give you a summary outline to say that when you are filing your taxes as a sole proper and LLC, you're using the exact 
same form. There is no different, no tax advantage. You can set it up as an LLC and choose later down the road to have that company tax as an S Corp. This allows the LLC to remain in the legal structure that's simple, but has the tax advantage of the S Corp. But the minute it does that, it has all of the requirements as well. Bottom line, this stuff is complicated. It's not simple. I'm a huge fan of DIY. I'll go on YouTube and take apart my Jeep and fix it. Lauren can contest to that. I just replaced my tow bar. I mean, I am like a huge fan of DIY, but there are certain aspects and finance and legal has been dumbing down in the entrepreneur world to seem much more simpler than it actually is. And this causes a lot of people to make choices that they find out later are incorrect. So Anna, back to you, we'll then get into the dissolving. I wanted to take some time to explain this to people, um, comments, thoughts on what I said or where to bring us from here. Yes, I really encourage everybody in this room, if they did not attend your workshop yet, to please go where she has a chance to explain all this, like, in, you know, like step by step, which is uh, how I learned about all this information. And one key thing was like the reasonable salary, right? Yeah. Because like, if you're not making money yet, your company is just starting, you don't need the headache of going through all of this that you could accomplish the same exact thing, like she said, with an, uh, as a sole proprietor, you know? So you, you, you really need to read when, when they're talking about like the legal, you, you uh, talk more about like the tax portion, which is what usually scares more people, people yeah. right? Like, oh, we're gonna talk about taxes. But the, the, the legal part as well, depend on the product and the service that your company is gonna offer, right? Like in my case, Become Odata offering marketing services, uh, we wouldn't be exposed as much as somebody, for example, who uh, bakes cakes and sells for, you know, like parties and all that. And suppose that you have, you have to follow like health guidelines and food guidelines. And there are like other agencies who will be supervising your your work so you might want to have an LLC in that case in case somebody sues you and sues your company so that will be a, a, another thing I think to to keep in mind but I think definitely uh, structuring in a simple way I know that Lori says it's complicated but she makes it easier so I'm, <laughs> I really think that you know like going to to the workshops and that can be very very helpful yeah, and that was great points. Let's talk about, you know, this thing. I When I tell people, well, the advantage of being incorporated, whether it's an LLC, an S Corp or a C Corp, is that you, once again, the company is sitting here next to me. It's a separate entity. You're suing the, next, the entity and not me personally. So when you say that or you see it or read it, people's natural response often incorrect once again is, well, I don't want to be sued, so this is a good thing. And that is a statement and a jump, a leap to a conclusion that has incorrect logical thought and assessment. Let me explain why. So first of all, let's break down this fear of being sued. As Ada said, so perfect. I mean, you could do a marketing plan and somebody may not like the results, but they're not going to take you to court and sue. So you have to see what is the reasonable aspects that you're going to be sued for this. Um, if we go back to, I spoke about Abby being um, on the um, call and going to be on the call again. When she first started out as an herbalist, she was operating as a sole prop. She really didn't have a concern so much about being sued. But when she started creating these products, she's now getting in all these big companies. She has these distribution. It's being made. I mean, it's complicated now. It's ingestible products. She, you know, she's making with her teas and her tinctures. So it was then made sense to create the LLC, but prior. And myself, you know, I, I've told people on the call many times, I started my first company when I was 25. I had more brains or more guts than brains at the time. I'd like to think I, I've evened it out a little bit now, right? But I operated as a sole prop until I became involved in banking with investment bankers and the CFO of bigger companies. I had more exposure. So I operated as a sole prop throughout that. So the first thing you have to see is, well, what is the potential, seriously, the potential about being sued? And the second thing to know is a lot of times people think, well, I want to sign a lease. And if I 
go bankrupt, I don't want to have to pay the lease or I want to take out a bank loan. And if I go bankrupt, I don't want to be personally responsible. Once again, incorrect information. There is these two letters that each of those situations have and they're big meanings. PGs, personal guarantee. 99.9% .9 of any leases you will sign will make you personally sign for it. All bank loans make you personally sign. So it doesn't matter if you go bankrupt, you're still personally responsible. When we have concerns about legal issues, even when we're incorporated, we buy insurance to support that. E and O, errors and omissions. You can Google that and see there's a whole set of insurances that can be customized to your situation. And so you will buy these insurances even when you're incorporated so you don't have to worry about the amount of expense if somebody does sue you. So we get, you know, a lot of times companies will talk people into using their services, like Anna was expressing, to incorporate because they say, we're a litigious, come, you know, society and you might get sued. Okay, we are a litigious society. That's true. You might get sued. Maybe that part's not true. So what I try to do is entrepreneurs are starting these companies with very little funds, your your savings, your credit cards, usually, you know, that's how entrepreneurs start. And it, it's really the only way to start. You don't want to bring on legal expense. You don't want to bring on legal requirements because the minute you're incorporated, you must follow these rules. You must have a separate bank account. You must make sure you do your accounting in such a way you suddenly have all these rules now when you're a sole prop i suggest you have your own bank account but you don't have to so it's like i always explain to people when somebody says well i i got this idea and i'm going to incorporate in fact i saw, talked to somebody the other day Anna, can you believe they had five llc's they got ideas and created llc's i was like you're creating llc's on ideas i mean the things i'm seeing nowadays are just crazy the legal stuff they're getting into and then what happens is that in it's people miss this $800 yearly franchise fee, and we're going to get into dissolving in a second on, and you'll share about that. So what happens is you cannot dissolve a corporation if you owe any taxes. And so people miss the franchise fee, not understanding. They get suspended. Then they have to make up for the back payments before they can dissolve it. And until they can dissolve it, they're inquiring more fees. I get through the SBDC, all the problem situations that deal with finance and tax. And in the last two months, guys, I have dealt with at least four people that did not realize that they had huge financial fees that were just basically being added up. One had filed as an S corp and didn't realize as an S corp, you must file taxes independent if you had any transactions. She had not filed a tax return for seven years, not thinking she needed to. Started the S corp when she was like 18, 19, didn't know, just let it go, thought, well, I better close it. She's up to about 10, 15,000 in fees that she has to, you know. So I'm seeing a lot of really, 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 really scary things out there. So I'm trying to be the voice of reason. So Anna, once I talked to you and said, okay, this maybe is not your best bet, where did we go next and what did you have to do? Let's bring that up. Yes, yes. So I, I want to also touch before I get into that, like the, like how I dissolved the company, how even like I incorporated, because you, what do you, well, we kind of already touched, but like the difficulties of understanding what's really like beneficial to you with all the marketing language out there. And I know that I am in this field, so I understand that those companies will be very strategic as soon as they see that you are looking for those words on Google, like how can I incorporate a company? Like what type of business should I incorporate? You know, can I open a business as an immigrant? They would capture your email, send you things that it would seem like that's exactly what you've been looking for. And you need to be very careful and understand, inform yourself. Um, so I was doing that, that research. And like you're saying, I think everybody kind of like don't want to be in trouble with the ROS. But being an immigrant, especially, you don't want to be in trouble with any uh, government organization, either it's ICE or the ROS. So I went to a company like uh that one of those companies that incorporate the, the the business for you thinking that i was doing the safe 
thing, right? Like, because they are experts, they would know how to, I was just like answering a form, simple questions, was a survey, and they were responsible to uh, fill up all those forms, make sure that all the information was right. And they, they are very good at it. They would do for you in like a day, they can pay an expedite fee and they would make it even faster. But what they are doing oftentimes, and it was the case with this company, um, they, they, are, they are keeping you from your records. They're gonna be the gatekeepers from those informations within the California uh, state government. I, I forgot That's the first state. Yep, yep, you're yes. right. So they will capture that information and every time that you need to change a file, change something in your business, you're going to have to go to them. Usually you pay a $50 fee. And again, that's a privilege, right? Because I was able to pay somebody who was about like $300 to pay, uh, to, to incorporate the company for me, be all legal, all good. I thought everything was fine until I find out that I needed to dissolve the company. And that's when uh, another mission is start another challenge another level of challenge that uh, I face because I had to contact this company at least four times to actually get access to my records to be able to myself go into the website and dissolve the company and I was only able to do that also like to only know where to start after a conversation with Lori and she explained there are two di two different types of, of forms to dissolve a long form and a short form in this case of this person you're mentioning who opened LLC for ideas they might not have you know like had any type of like business um might not have like a conduct any type of business but and here's again why it's important to understand what those words mean. Like when Lori said, I have not, when I incorporated for 20 days, right? I didn't have a company or a client at the time. So I was like, okay, I'm good. I can just fill up the short form and move on, right? And then she was like, wait, did you open a business account? Yep. And I had. Yep, it's transactions is the word, any business transaction. And you're right on it. So many times people get confused and they think, you say, did you do anything in their business? And they go, I didn't make a sale. A sale is just an aspect. There's expenses, there's opening businesses, et cetera. And the thing about those companies, and I'm, I'm not necessarily against them, I sound like I am, um, but all they are is clean is filling out forms, guys. And California just updated their website. You can fill out a form to file an LLC within, I think it would only take you five or 10 minutes on the website. So they're really not giving you a service. I'm fine for paying if they walked you through the process, explained everything, helped you understand, helped you make a good choice but they're not acting as a consulting firm. They are only filling out a form for you that's very simple to fill out. Now, when it comes to an S-Corp, I, I suggest getting a, a lawyer and assistance because those are really hard to, to create. But, you know, with an LLC, it's pretty simple. And so they're really not giving an added value. They're just charging money. And Anna's completely correct on the fact that you have to then look and you can either do the short form or the long form. But remember on the form, Anna, that you had to make sure you had all the T's crossed and the I's dotted and you had to check that you're going to file a last tax return. So you yeah. still have to file tax returns if you have to do the long form. It's It gets involved, doesn't it? Yeah. But all this stuff is on the government website. It's just people don't know where to look for it. And that's another thing, like it takes the education to know also what type of right questions to ask on Google to actually yeah. get the information from the government. And you are the one who pointed out to the right direction in the website to find the right forms, to find the right section. So when I went there, what is the website you refer Is the California SOS website. Yeah, and so in that case, what you want to do, B Palm, send an email to Lauren and she will get your email from you to me and I will send it to you so you know the exact place to go, et cetera. But yes, Anna, thank you. That's where you need to go, Biz Online. And they just updated it. They're trying to make everything online. And so right. that's where you can go for all the certain forms, et cetera, like that. So um, and, and they did it take you to dissolve it? Was it once you understood? It was just a matter of minutes, I, I would assume, right? Yeah, Anna? and it was it was also like getting them to actually give me the access. That's what I spend the most time, you know, like 
Yeah. And when I called the California Secretary of State, I talked to the, their agent and they said, oh, you're not the first person calling here and asking for this because I was like, hey, the, I am the only- We gotta know something. Look, at she called. You can call these agencies, guys. She called, she talked to them. I tell them all the time, even yeah. like a sales tax, you call the agencies and talk to them. I call them and talk to them when I don't understand. Continue, yes. but I make a point that don't rely on Google. These, these government agencies have phone numbers. You can contact them. Yes. So I contact them and um, this uh, agent, he told me that I was not the first person trying to access my own records because he yep. was like, hey, it's my company. It's my name on it. Like, it was like, yeah, a lot of companies, they're just ignoring the people when they're requesting or they're taking long. To, he said, you just, they just literally need to click a button to give you access to this. So yep. finally, this company that I worked with uh, gave me access uh, and I was able to fill up the, the long form. I first need to actually go to the bank where I opened my business account which was an entire story as well as a Latina woman going to a bank, trying to open an account. Uh, there was several things that they were asking for documentation, but it seemed that there were like extra diligence because of my background and because like trying to really make sure that I was completely legal and structured to open this business. So that was another uh, unfortunate thing that I had to go through. And then I had to go back to the bank and we find out like a lot of those business accounts, you need to have a minimum balance. You yep. have to keep that. So that's also another thing that adds to your to your expenses if you are considering, you know, like going LLC when you you might be just fine with your sole property uh, proprietor. Because um, then I have to open this bank account. I spent like I put two hundred dollars uh, to open the bank account, and then I talked to the to the manager to give me some waiving period uh, of the fees. And I explained to her like, I'm just started. I don't, I don't make money yet. I am going to fight for it and, and hopefully have more money in this account. But they were kind of like, well, but we don't have the history. We don't know what type of business we are getting to. But then for my, I don't know, maybe it was luck, but their app wasn't working on my phone. So I went back and I said, hey, I still don't have access to my account. And it was such a hassle that they were like, you know what, we're going to waive your fee for a year. I was like, great. Oh. But I ended up not needing the account because I needed to close um, the, I, I dissolved the company. So I closed the account. With, that was one of the directions that Lori gave me as well, like making sure that everything in the business related mm -hmm. is closed. And it's not really, um, you know, like continue like with any transaction when you're telling the government that I do not operate anymore as an LLC. Um, and then and that's sales tax too, guys. I mean, you didn't have one, but I have seen people think, well, I'll just continue to use the same sales tax permit. No, that's under the LLC now. So you got to close it out and you got to look at it like when you dissolve a corporation, it's dead. Everything has to be done and removed, and then you have to have a t final tax return that's done too. So it can be a real expensive mistake. And you know, on one thing I wanted to add is just this week, I had somebody in the same situation and she, I said, I'm waiting on to get the actual paper. She went through a company and she sent me two documents. She goes, I got my papers and I looked at them. One was a document that was sent to her to buy posters to put up in, which yes, you got that, I'm kidding. And then the other document was to get this legal status certificate, which you don't even friggin' need. And they were wanting to charge her a hundred more. I think they sold her name to a name selling list. And I said, these are not the documents and don't spend the money you don't need this stuff. Did you have that right. similar experience? I I was so excited when I got something in the mail saying become Odara LLC. And then when I got the paper, it was like, wait, is that something that I have to pay? So when I opened, it was one of those things like yep. for workers um, to have the workers laws, posters, you know, yep. like posters. And I don't even have like yep. an office. I don't need that. And you don't have workers. And so no. they use this to get you more, to buy more things you don't understand. Exactly. I'm telling you, this is an awful exactly. rap go down. Exactly. I have, I took a photo because I want to write a, a blog post about this as well. Uh, I took a photo of all the mail that I yeah. received in within like two months, 
even after incorporated continue to receive like uh you know like become all that uh, llc things to to pay uh yeah different things like licenses insurances and all those things. and they they use a marketing language that makes you think that you actually need that or you know you're not going to be compliant and yeah. you you're like okay so let me just it, they act on fear because really if you are open and you want to be like you know like acting proper you might go ahead and pay something that you don't need to and they're close to looking real. I have to look at it. When I was yes. the CFO in companies, I would train the controller and the accounting people. I would bring documents and I'd say, tell me which one's real and get them trained to look at. They are scary, real looking. And I cannot tell you how many people are paying for things that they should not be paying for. That's why this is so important to get this information out. Yes. And like I said, Anna was really kind to come on and tell her story and really get this word out. And I was so excited because this is not something that is a one-off. I'm seeing it more and more every single week at the SBDC. So Anna, we have about five minutes left. I want to make sure we get out some other information. So you have just recently joined a company. I'm going to let you tell about it. And it's something that, like I told you at the very beginning before we started the show, that I had a familiarity with because I've utilized it, but I didn't really know what it was all about. So please tell us what company you're joined and what they do and why is it important for us as entrepreneurs to know about their company yes thank you Lori. i mean to me i even i started become without a community was everything that's why I, I built this business around female owned uh other people to really help them and also like latina women so when i joined cow matters which is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization we are the only news outlet covering the state of California, uh, all the way in Sacramento. Like seven years ago, before Cal Matters existed, uh, California had about 100 journalists covering the state. And now we have around like 20 to 30 uh, journalists. Most of them are Cal Matters employees. And our journalists, like, if, if we think about California as like, we are the fifth biggest economy in the entire world. We have 39 million people and we definitely need our representatives to be held accountable and also like understand really what's going on. Like for me as an immigrant, like talking about the language, politics can be so complicated. Don't even get me started in the electoral process in the United States because that's like completely different. Um, also like information to me and also really new. So when I joined Cal Matters, I am like now the uh, community engagement manager. And my purpose in the company is to really create this bound, the safe space where the communities can understand more about the things that we are covering and also have like insights and feedbacks in how we can actually um, be under, understanding really what California uh, all, all the laws and all the things that are happening in the world. So like how matters is like completely free and we talk about taxes. So like we, we survive on members donations. So all those donations are uh, tax uh, deductible. And the key thing, if we have voters here in this panel, like I really, I highly recommend you to go and check our voters guide because it's like a nonpartisan organization giving you information about what is in your ballot like i could not understand all the complexities of the propositions because the propaganda again it's yeah. made so great that it gets confusing you think that you should vote no for one thing and then you think wait but maybe it's yes i don't know so we have all those informations also at calmatters.org so really um excited to to share this with you because we are california explain anybody living in california who who is interested to understand this huge state um should definitely check it out well you know on a first and foremost they're very lucky to have you i mean you are a great spokesperson for the company and i've gone to cal matters because like she said it's bipartisan and it's really just information about what the ballots mean and here's an example some of you guys may be familiar with the law that went into effect called ab5 i think it was around 2019. this highly affects companies in their inability to hire 1099 independent contractors and because they're doing something 
in the normal course of business. So AB5 came out without a lot of companies understanding and then COVID hit and people weren't aware of it. And then it came on the um, ballot and all they were voting for was to exclude Uber and other companies from AB5, but it left AB5 on the books to still cause problems for the small companies. And many people I would speak to and I say, well, according to AB5 law, you cannot hire them as an independent contractor. You must hire them as an employee. They go, no, no, that passed on the ballot. We don't, no, no, that excluded Uber from the law. You are still required. So a lot of people just don't understand because, you know, it, I think about this all the time on, I feel like just in general, life has gotten more complicated and you really have to be aggressive and vigilant in your education on all of these things because the propaganda we're just going to speak propaganda it boils these complexities down to a sentence and they are not a sentence worth of complexities. There's underlying things that you need to know. So places like Cal Matters, where you can go, you can read up on it, you can quickly get an understanding, really matter. And I think it, you're a great representative of that. Well, Anna, I can't believe we're out of time. Um, to those that are on the show today, I hope that your takeaway is, let me ask more questions before I assume. If you want to have a meeting with me to discuss this in more or detail. Do a shout out to Lauren. Lauren will get to me for a one-on-one. -on -one. The webinar that Anna took was one that I used to do on legal structures. I haven't done in a bit. Maybe I'll bring that one back in because I haven't presented that one since um, you know you brought it to mind. I'm like, maybe I need to bring that one back into existence. Once COVID hit, I had so much going on with um, the grant programs, et cetera. I stopped doing all the type of webinars I did. But I hope today in the audience, it was educational. You could see Anna is just a bundle of joy. You really are. I love your excitement your energy you're so vivacious and you know i this is not something that i say commonly to people it's not an expression that Lori just says to everybody but you're just so alive you're so <laughs> alive and you're engaged and you're refreshing and i think you're just uh, wonderful and i'd love for you to come back on the show again and tell us what you're doing you're a great spokesperson for your community for the business community across the board on we're really lucky to have you in california in united states since you came here from brazil and um on the show it's been thank such you. a joy such a joy um thank Laura, you so much Muito obrigada. It's been wonderful yeah it was amazing like and i see here all the the people who who are in the in the in the room Lori with red dress is everything <laughs> and um everybody's saying thank you i i really appreciate you all for hearing our uh, my story and also encourage you to also share your own story because we all go through unique things that connect us because we realize that we are not so unique and other people are also like facing the same type of issues so thank you so much for having me today you're welcome. And in that, you know, as Anna says, if you've got a story you want to tell, I've said this time and time again, small biz talk is not about I've created some great milestone or success. It's real people talking about real things. And that was my idea from the beginning. And I think that's why we're still going so strong is it's real people talking about real things. Well, thank you so much to everybody who's been there. Anna, thank you so much. Lauren, we're going to let you, I mean, I can see the chat still going. It's going like yes. this. I think it's going to just keep going. So I, I will uh, let you continue to manage the chat. And, uh, just a shout out to everybody that comes here every week. And like I said, we got a great lineup coming the next couple of weeks. So I will see you next week. Anna, good luck in your new position and everything you're doing. And Lauren, thank, thank you. you for always holding everything together and being the glue in all of this. Oh, you're so welcome. Anna, that was amazing. Lori, I think I'm going to be setting up a, a session because I myself fell into the trap as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just earlier this year, I was like, I'm going to make it official. I'm going to open this company, making it official. Yes. Means, you know, okay. right.
glad yeah. that, Lauren, because I meant to bring that up during the talk. I'm glad you said that because I have had people say, I wanted to be a real company. I wanted to be official, like it, like if you got this badge of honor because you're an LLC. And that's so not true. It right. doesn't matter. You know when you get a badge of honor? You want to know? You just tried. You started a company. You took a step forward. And you know when you get a bunch of gold stars? You ready for this one? This is when you, you got a badge of honor for trying. This is the five gold okay. star. You made enough money to pay for the cost to produce, the expense for the company, have money left over for yourself, for your lifestyle you desire, and money to reinvest in the company, and you're happy with what you're doing. Five stars. Nothing I said involved a legal structure. They have yeah. nothing to do with it. Yes. Okay, guys. Yeah. I think one thing, if I can add, like that I am grateful about like the mistakes I made, because if it wasn't for that company, I wouldn't have known about SBDC. So I wouldn't have met uh -huh. and I wouldn't get so like doing it, doing the things is actually like I know, I think uh, Ronnie says here, um, Randy, sorry, said that he was like uh, afraid and it was like, I know it's a scary, but when you are mm -hmm. actually there in the arena, you know, like getting our handful of like mud it's when we actually get um to learn the the real lessons or you have a community like we have here we can share the stories and avoid some of those mistakes but i wish you all the best luck also like in your endeavors uh i'll be rooting for every single one of you here and please <laughs> keep in touch absolutely and randy shout out to you i'm gonna see you tomorrow or uh, zoom call or phone call <laughs> at uh, 10 a.m i think i got the randy the randy call to check in and see how that excel is working for her. so yeah shout out to her <laughs> to everybody reach out to me tomorrow 10 30 you got it randy you i'll be waiting for your phone call randy it's kind of funny on it because randy when i was working with her on the excel she would get confused on the day and she would just call me every thursday at 10 30 and i I said, okay, the rest of my life, Thursday at 10 30, I'm gonna answer the phone. <laughs> it's gonna be Randy. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. guys, we gotta end, man. Thank we can go forever. Hi, Annie. I'll see you in a bit. We gotta go. Anna, thank you so much. Hi, Lauren, you. I'll see you next week. Thank you to everybody in the audience. A big thank you and shout out to you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you both. Bye, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Well, have a good one. Bye, you too. To all of you who are still on, be sure to check the chat for all of the links that Lori shared. I have inputted my email a couple of times, so be sure you send me an email if you'd like to uh, set up an appointment with Lori. She is looking forward to meeting with you, and she's very quick when it comes to responses. So go ahead and set that up. Um, and yes. Yes, we do have a recording of today's show. It should be processing and ready to go probably by the end of the day and posted to our YouTube channel. So let me go ahead and input that one more time. Bear with me. Okay, here we go. So go ahead, check that YouTube channel so you can uh, look at our uh, recordings and thank you to all of you who joined us today. We'll see you next week, Wednesday, 10 a.m. for another episode of Small Biz Talk, uh, solutions for your small business. Take care. Bye.